Clue Network. To edify, to encourage, to upskill. This is Christian Life Upskill with Ifai of Hong Subscribe now. Hi, welcome to Clue, Christian Life Upskill. My name is Ifai of In this video, I want to show you how to maximize our prayer life. How to maximize our prayer life. You know, it's going to be the first of many series I'm going to be doing on prayer. So, if you hang on, you're going to be getting some videos on prayer in the, in the next three, four, five weeks. You know, the Lord has been sharing daily with me on some of the things to share, and I felt it's going to be very beneficial to to us as Christians. You know, prayer is so vital in our dealing with God. You know, one of the things that prayer does for us first is it changes us. There's this discipline it gives to us first before even the answers begin to come, you know. So we are first the person that prayer affects as Christians. You know, some are saying, I, I want to live a life of prayer. This is the reason for this video, to, sh to share with us how to go about these things and how to be able to produce results in our life. So sit back and enjoy. The first step in maximizing our prayer life, the first step is start and commit to a short time of prayer for a start. You know, prayer for some people is like eating an elephant. You know, it's too big. I don't know where to start from. You know, so I'm going to break it down for you. Start with a short, committed prayer time. 15 minutes. Just start with it. You know, start with a short time of committed prayer time. 15 minutes to start. You know, you can also increase with time, that's okay. But stick first with that 10 minutes, with that 15 minutes, you decide to, you know, you tell God, Father, I'm going to commit to a 10 minutes prayer time every day. I'm going to commit to a 15 minutes prayer time every day and commit to it. You know, with time, you're going to grow to get to a stronger time. But first, start with a committed short time of prayer. With this, you're going to develop consistency. You know, consistency. You know, consistency is the key in terms of prayer. I was reading something about a man, which we all know, who wanted to be a Mr. Universe. You know, and he started doing some things we call push-up. And every day, he does 5,000 push-ups. And in less than six months, his body, his build became, you know, that was because he kept to, but he didn't start from the 5,000. He started from 20, you know, 30, and increased it. But when he got to 5,000, he started pushing from that 5,000. So that is our prayer. Is you start from where you are, and then you build to that greater length of time in prayer. And it's going to help you. The second step in maximizing our prayer time is pray all kinds of prayer. You know, in that little 15 minutes you want to spend praying, pray all kinds of prayer. There are different kinds of prayer, like what Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 18, Paul writes, says, Praying always with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit, and watching unto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. So, in this verse alone, Paul talked about a lot of a lot and different kinds of prayer. He talks about intercession because when you start talking, praying for other people, you are interceding. So Paul says, praying always with all kind of prayer and supplication in the spirit. The word there is prosushi. And this is, in other words, you 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 make specific requests of people for all sins. So you start by praying for yourself, pray for your neighbor, pray for your your governor, pray for your mayor, pray for your president, pray for your kings. You know these are the kind of prayers you start with. All kinds of prayer. You know we see also in the book of First Timothy chapter two, Paul writing says, "I exhort therefore that first of all." supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. So these are the kind of prayers. God doesn't want us to be selfish in our prayer. He wants us to include other people. You know, it's not about give me, give me, give me, give me, give my son, give my children, give my grandchildren, and no more. No, God wants us to extend our prayer to other people, to be a blessing to others. So you start with a short time, but make it quick and pray all kinds of prayer. With this, you'll be able to capture a lot of things. Hallelujah. The next step in maximizing our prayer life 
is get a prayer partner. Get, if you can, get a prayer partner. You know, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 13, Moses writing says, One who chase a thousand, says two shall put ten thousand to flight. Imagine the, 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 the calculation. One can chase a thousand, but two will put ten thousand to flight. So that tells you of what two believers can do. Remember what Jesus was talking? He says, if, you, if two of you, two or three of you shall agree about something, he says it shall be done. So there is power when more than just one believer comes together to do something. So get a prayer partner. Why should I get a prayer partner? First, for accountability. You know, for accountability. Second, to encourage one another. You know, he'll call you, have you prayed today? No, I've not prayed. You say, go and start praying. You know, so these are the things that you need. That is if you think it's important. You don't, you don't have to, but I'm teaching you what I really feel will help you in growing your prayer life. There's no distance in the realm of the Spirit. So you just have to control yourself, you know, chat up, you know, have you prayed today? Have, you know, and you agree on things to pray about and you see the manifestation. With this, you'll be able to check your prayer life and build a rich prayer pattern, a rich prayer lifestyle. Hallelujah. The fourth step in maximizing our prayer life is get up earlier. Not get up early, but get up earlier. I mean, if you go to work maybe by 6 o'clock, um, you know, it's, it's wise to wake up earlier. So 5.30 you're awake. As you wake up, you know, freshen up a little so that you can be awake and get up from the bed. Don't pray on the bed. I promise you, you will sleep off again. So it's so important to get leave the bed, go to the sitting room, walk around, pray in the spirit and let your body be alert. Don't wake up, I want to pray and just lie on the bed. You will sleep off. So this is a secret I'm sharing with you. You don't pray lying on the bed, you will sleep off. So get up, Go to the sitting room, walk around, and then start praying. But do it earlier. So if you're if you leaving the house by 6 o'clock, maybe at 5.30 you should be awake. And pray for 15 minutes like you say you want to pray. And then do some other things you need to do. So getting up earlier is so important to, to building a culture of prayer. As you know, the psychologist told us that when you do something for three weeks consistently, you build an habit. So as you do this consistently, once it's 5 30, you're awake, even without the alarm. So what are you doing? You're building a culture of prayer that will help you to live a, and sustain a good prayer lifestyle. The last and not the least on how to maximize our prayer lifestyle, our prayer life, is get a journal. You know, every time you pray, there is a strong angelic activity. Every time we pray, the heavens are open. Every time we pray, God is listening. So it's so wise and important that as you start praying, get a writing material. Get a writing material because God will speak to you. And so as you begin to pray, get a writing material. Every time you want to pray, get a writing material. Because as you pray, God is going to whisper things to your ear. You know, and He's going to tell you things. You know. And also while you're praying, write out your prayer point so that as you begin to look back, you see the things that God has done. You can take them. You know, it will also help you to know that God is answering, answering your prayer and to also boost your faith. You know, and strengthen you more to ask for more and to push for more. So it's so important to have a prayer journal because God will always speak to you as you pray. Four ways God speaks to us when you pray. One of them is by giving us prophecy, giving us revelation. So God will open up truth to you. As he does, as God does that, you put them in your writing. This is how we got the Bible today. How did the Bible got to us today? It got to us because men were journaling the things that God has given, given to them. We saw in the book of Habakkuk, it says, write down the vision. He said, at the appointed time it will happen. He said, write them down. You know, write them down so that those who see it will run with the vision. Hallelujah. So it's so important to write down some of the things as we pray, some of the things that God tells us. Because a generation we might get this thing and become greatly blessed by them. We saw in the book of you know, 2 Peter chapter 1, from 2 to 1, you know, Peter writing says, Prophecy came not by the will of men. It says, But holy men wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost moved them. For example, like Jeremiah. Jeremiah had was moved by the Holy Ghost. But he didn't always write. He had a scribe who wrote for him. His name was Baruch. So as the Holy Ghost moves on Jeremiah to write, Baruch writes some of the things Jeremiah says. And that is how we have the book of Jeremiah today. 
You know, some of those prophecies are what Jeremiah said. So imagine that Jeremiah didn't put down some of these things. We we'll lose a lot of things. Imagine that these things were not doc well documented. This was what Daniel saw in the book of Daniel chapter 9, when he says, I saw by books. He saw the prophecy that was written down, that the times has elapsed for the captivity of the children of Israel in the land of Babylon. He saw it because somebody documented it. So it's so important as Christians, as you pray, have your journals, have your writing materials. As you, as God begins to inspire your spirit, write down these things. And as you do them, you know, God, he also brings you to that place of expectancy. God knows you are serious. You want to hear from him. He will speak to you. And as you do this, God will richly bless your prayer life. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for, you know, spending time to watch this video. My prayer and desire is that God will vitalize your spirit and give you that desire and passion to press into the deep and to get things from Him. You know, He said He has, he has called us to be kings and priests. What, what do the priests do? They offer sacrifice. So every time we pray, we, we push incense to God. Hallelujah. So He wants us to offer those incense to Him in prayer. So you are a priest, you are a king. So He wants us to live that lifestyle of a priesthood. And as you begin to push into these things, God will begin to reveal himself more to you. And you see that your prayer life will grow. Hallelujah. So thank you very much for watching. God bless you. If you want me to share about some things, there's something bubbling your heart, and you want me to you know, share some things with you, some topics, you can send us, send us an email, or you can send us a message on the comment section. And when I see them, I will talk about it and share with you. Thank you very much.